Greetings, my name is Monty Martin and welcome back to Isadora 101. In this series of video tutorials, we've been learning about the fundamentals for working with Isadora 3. And this is our final session together. Today, rather than powering up Isadora and teaching you more about how to use the software itself, because there's always more to learn with such an expansive application, I thought that I would talk about 10 tips or principles, or rather things that I wish I knew when I started working with Isadora well over a decade ago. These are guiding principles that I like to remind myself whenever I start on a new Isadora project. Whether it is a big installation work that's going to be involving a huge team of people working in a major theatrical venue, or a small little installation piece that I'm creating myself for a gallery or a local exhibit at the university. These grounding principles are things beyond just the mechanics of working with Isadora, although some of them inter intersect with these things, and they've been helpful for me time and time again. The first principle that I'd like to share with you is to do your homework. Now, this might sound like a little bit of a nebulous thing. There's a lot of work involved in preparing an Isidore project, large or small, and the field of projection and interactive media design is a very young one. There's no real established practices uh, for paperwork or what sort of prep should go into a project. And really, every project is different, so it's probably for the best that there's no established set of rules quite yet. But I like to borrow my principles for this area from lots of different fields. I love creating things like a storyboard, a technique I learned from my film school friends, or creating a wireframe similar to what many app developers or computer programmers do when designing their interfaces. I love looking to the principles of game design when I think about interactive works, and I also find that creating a cue sheet is a pretty essential step when I'm creating a projection design. Oftentimes, I'll also have to be worried about the mechanics of how all my hardware and software talk to each other, so I really recommend creating things like a flowchart or a diagram or a connection map that shows how all the moving pieces from your computers, cameras, microphones, and all the pieces that are going to plug into each other are all going to fit together in the space that they're going to be installed in. This can end up being a lot of extra work, and it's a lot of work that doesn't really involve much of doing anything with Isadora, but it will clarify everything that you are doing, and you will spend much more effective time putting together and realizing your vision with Isadora. Now, this connects to tip number two, which is always remember the space you're working in, and think about that environment and the bodies that are going to be moving within it. It's so easy to get really deep into a design with Isadora and end up sitting on your own at your desk in front of your computer, connecting all your actors together and forgetting about the people and the place that all that is going to be happening in and around. It is so important to not lose sight of the space that you are working in. In particular, because over the years I found that a simple effect created with Isadora, one that shows strong consideration and a dramaturgy for the space and the bodies within that space, is often more effective, more meaningful, and certainly more memorable than the most complex bit of programming or generative art that I've created with Isadora. What you make with Isadora needs to be part of the environment that it inhabits. It needs to feel responsive, like it belongs there in some way, shape, or form, or at least resonates within that. Never lose sight of the space that you're working in, and hopefully you get a lot of time to work in that space. This actually feeds into the next piece of advice I have. Number three, take your time. In the midst of doing all your homework and thinking about your space, Give yourself the time to do these things. Build that schedule out, and sometimes it might take weeks, if not months, before your project comes to life, before you even get to work in the space where your project is going to happen, for you to plan things out and really think about things. Every hour you spend 
thinking about your project, planning things out, making details will often pay massive dividends when you are in the space itself. In my experience working in performance and theater, the time in the theater itself is always at a tremendous premium. It never feels like we have enough time at all. And there is so much that has to be done in that space. Whether you are building your cues or practicing with the other performers, or you are spending all the time that you need to projection map or hang your projectors, this is a really critical step and it can take up far more time than you ever anticipate. So that's why creating time by doing your homework, by thinking about the space before you arrive in it, that'll give you that more valuable time to iterate, to prototype, to try things and experiment. I'm constantly experimenting with Isadora, trying things that might never actually make it into a show, just experimenting, puzzling things out, seeing, will this work? And I built up a bit of a back catalog of fun tips, tricks, and techniques, and small little pieces of a design that I can always pull in whenever I unexpectedly need them. Things are always going to change once you get into a space. Make sure that you have the time to explore things once you're there. Part of this as well is when you are collaborating with others, be realistic and defend your time as well. So many times I've been asked by a stage manager or a colleague to do things much faster than I realistically knew what was possible to accomplish it in. Be honest, if you need a day to map out your projections, say so. And if you can, ask for two days. <laughs> My next tip is learn and know your hardware. The computer that you're running Isadora on is like your musical instrument. It's part of the whole operation. And whether you're using your own personal machine or the machine owned by a theater company or a rental, knowing that machine and how it works is really going to be a big part of how your project is going to run. One of the brilliant things about Isadora is that it will work on anything from a six-year-old MacBook to a high-power custom-built PC tower with the latest high-power graphics cards. This is wonderful, but it can be difficult to, to actually know, well, what is the full capability of this machine? The only way you're going to find that out is by trying it. You can do a lot of preparation and a lot of homework in advance to help you figure this out. You can learn about specs, you can try things out. But this is part of the reason why taking that time is so important, particularly for ambitious projects or projects that are on a tight budget. If you are working with a lower end computer, that's fine. You're gonna get brilliant results with Isadora within what your machine is capable of doing. Test things out, use things like the status monitor to really understand what's going on with your machine and you won't feel like you are limited by what is possible on your hardware. Rather, you'll have lots of opportunities for what you can create right there in front of you. As part of this, I do recommend that you test everything first. Do a dry run before things get hung up and installed. And by the way, web browsers like Google Chrome take up a lot of system resources. If you find that things are running pretty slowly on your computer, you might want to get off Facebook. Tip number five is understand your media. As we saw in our previous tutorials about working with masking and keying and compositing and layering, you can do a lot with media in Isadora as long as that media has had a little bit of preparation first. Understanding, do I need to work with a green screen? What kind of color do I need to have going on here? What is happening in the video images? Is it looping nicely? These can all change the scope of what you can accomplish with your media assets in Isadora. But more over this, on the technical front, you might want to be mindful of the resolution and the frame rate of all the media that you're using. It's a great best practice to make sure that all the media, particularly all the video that you're working with in Isadora, is at the same resolution and the same frame rate. Not only does this keep a lot of visual consistency across your entire project, but it also adds a lot of stability as well when you are playing back video. You might also want to take the time to check out some of the really helpful articles on the Trigotronic site that talk about the various video codecs that you can encode your media in. 
Popular media types like H.264 are not always the best codec to encode your media in. And using a codec like HAP or ProRes might be better depending on the type of computer that you're using and what you want to achieve with your media in your project. I personally love using the HAP codec. You can find it on the VidVox website. Download that and install that and start using applications like Handbrake to convert all your existing media into that format. Or once you have HAP installed, you can export directly to that format as well. Using these techniques, we'll find that not only is your media running more efficiently and stably on Isadora, but you've also got more control over it as you're working with it. Tip number six is break it down. Isadora is a very expansive application, and it can be tempting to experiment in real time, and before you know it, you have hundreds of actors in your scene. And so much is happening, and your system load is really, really high, your frame rates are dropping, and too much is happening at once. Break it down. Use the techniques that we looked at for creating user actors, activated scenes, or even just splitting your work into multiple scenes and using the scene control in an intelligent and perhaps interactive manner, and break things into smaller chunks. It's often not necessary to have dozens and dozens of movie players and projectors in a single scene at once. You might be able to use really effective actors like the router and the selector to channel things out in a really intelligent way. I really like to figure out and ask myself, okay, what is the smallest number of actors that I can use to achieve this? Can I break it out into multiple scenes? Can I use user actors to make things look more efficient? This is a really, really key principle in making your Isadora patches super, super stable, especially if you're going into an installation, handing that work off to somebody else, or you want to make sure that your project is the most reliable and stable it can be. An Isidore project is always an evolving piece of work. Whether you are evolving it, working with your collaborators in a space or for a specific project, or it's evolving on your own as you are organizing and creating things more and more, it's going to be growing and changing in different ways. Don't forget to save your work, but save it in multiple versions. I really like as a best practice, saving my Isadora projects either at the start of each day or at the end of each working day as a new Isadora file with the date and time put into the file name. This is a really handy process to get in the habit of using and will mean that if you change things and need to go back to an earlier version, perhaps you deleted an entire scene and you realize, oh, actually, that was really smart. I want to put that back in. Well, this is the best way to go back to the prior version and recover and recuperate that work. Sometimes you might create something that is just a mess and it's just not working out and you just want to restore back to a previous version. Getting into the habit of doing this, saving multiple versions of your work, and most critically, saving it and backing it up to an extra hard drive is super, super critical. Especially for us theater artists who might be traveling between different venues, you never know what could happen to your computer or your hardware. Sometimes I've had colleagues that have lost their entire projects because it was living on a computer that got left behind on a streetcar or a subway or a machine that got dropped and broken. And now the entire project, which was opening two days later, is gone. Back your work up and this is a good argument for using cloud storage services as well, at least to store the essential Isadora files in the most important media. Have a backup and use it. More than just backing up your data, have a backup plan. During a performance, there are innumerable things that can go wrong. Things that might not even be related to Isadora itself or the computer that you're working on, whether that's someone forgetting their lines, someone missing their cue, or any number of things that can happen in the magical world of live performance. Think about these things and have a backup or a contingency plan. I like to think about, hey, what's going to happen if my computer crashes or Isadora crashes or shuts down in the middle of the project? What would we do? What happens if a wrong cue fires and we skip ahead a couple scenes by just an operator fat fingering something. All of these things and more can happen, and it's useful to think about them, even if it's a bit unsettling. 
I think about it as Murphy's Law. If you have a plan, hopefully you're never going to have to use it. But at the same time, there are many amazing techniques that you can use to recuperate a project automatically, to automate it so that it can restore itself. But be careful of these rabbit holes. Sometimes the best solution to many problems in interactive and computer-based artworks is to simply realize that if the computer crashes, it's just time to apologize and tell everyone in the audience, hey, the computer crashed, we're going to be back up in two minutes. I find that people do appreciate that honesty, and while I've only had to do that a handful of times over the course of my career, it was never as scary as I thought it was going to be to just have to say, hey, the technology's being temperamental. <laughs> you all have problems with your iPhones, and everyone laughs, we get five minutes, and the show picks right back up where it started again. It's okay, but think about what you're going to do, and think about what the team is going to do. They're always going to appreciate knowing that a backup plan is ready and waiting. In particular, if you're doing things with live video or interactive work, particularly captured media, it's really handy to have an alternative version of your show that can be loaded up that can run if the sensors don't work, or if the camera breaks, or if the Wi-Fi goes down. I've built shows where I've had entire alternate versions of the entire Isadora project where if there was a problem and the interactive component was not functioning, we can go to it. I had a show where we were using a wireless feed from a smartphone and a, the input from a Kinect, and the cables got unplugged 10 minutes into the show, but I had a backup version that didn't depend on that data that allowed the stage manager to fake it. It saved the opening night. Document everything. Take pictures, take video. If you've got a photographer coming in, make sure that they take good video of your designs. It feels like a no-brainer, but I have a bunch of shows that I don't have good documentation of, and I was really proud of that work. But there's nothing showing the work anymore because I didn't take any video of it. There's a couple stills and some cool photos, but taking a video recording of what you've created in the space with the bodies in it is a great portfolio building piece and something that you can always go back to to remember the successes that you've created. Furthermore to that, beyond just documenting the work by taking photos and video, it's really handy for yourself to document your own Isadora patch. There's several great actors in Isadora, like the comment actor, that you can is use to annotate your own Isadora patch. And oftentimes I will go back and do this. I will document what's going on in the patch so that if the show gets remounted two or three years later or I want to come back to it or use some old techniques, I have some notes in there that I can rely on. Now, the final tip is that if you can't help yourself, get help from the community. The help and support that is available to anyone working with Isadora is one of the richest resources available to you and one of the best reasons to work with Isadora. Know that these things exist, and if you need help, know where to go to get it. If you have questions about how to do something, about how to make your ideas happen, the Troikotronics communities are the best place to go. And if you're having a problem with Isadora and you need some troubleshooting help, shoot the tech team an email, make up a put in a ticket. You'll get the help that you need and be advised on how you can fix that problem. It's a really awesome asset to have in your back pocket. Never forget about it. Just make sure that you think about the early tips. Take the time and recognize that when you are going to need this help, the worst time to be needing the help from somebody else is two hours before opening night. So make sure that if you do think you might need help, that you seek it out and you give yourself the time to implement those solutions and perhaps make the revisions and changes necessary to fix the problems and solve the issues. We have learned so much together in our time here at Isadora 101, but we are really just scratching the surface of everything that is possible with Isadora. I encourage you to go out and start making amazing things with this application, but there is so much more to learn as you grow and develop in using it. Whether you want to explore doing things with scripting and JavaScript and more computer programming sort of things to do some really complex interactions, bringing in motion tracking, or trying to do large-scale projection mapping and edge blending with IsiMap and more, 
There are so many incredible things that you can do with Isadora. So please come back to us here on YouTube. Check out all of our other videos on these advanced and intermediate topics because there is always so much more to learn. Isadora is a constantly evolving application, and this is a constantly evolving field. There are always more things to discover and new great things to create. That's all for our series of workshops. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that you will create some truly incredible and amazing things with Isadora. Take care.